First of all, he, he's beautiful. Beautiful smile. A high kilowatt smile and a magnetic personality. Everyone liked him. But now, no one can find him. This case doesn't make much sense. Logan Schindelman has vanished. Who benefits from Logan's disappearance? Was he the victim of foul play or lost, not wanting to be found? There was a lot of tension at home. Uh, he didn't want to be there. And we're asking the tough questions. When I'm going to ask this, but don't take it as my accusing you of anything. Logan Schindelman's high school days in Tumwater, Washington, were filled with friends, fun, and football. He's a good athlete, too. Yeah, he's really good. Uh, he uh, started defensive back in, in high school for two years, actually. Took it to state twice. His athletic ability, all American good looks, and easygoing attitude brought lots of friends. I don't know of anyone that ever disliked him. But according to his grandmother, who didn't initially return our phone calls, but did answer the door when we showed up. If you didn't mind, we'd love to have, ask you some questions about Logan. The good times Logan had in high school didn't follow him after graduation. He changed a lot. He had some couple things happen right after high school that made him really aware of um, racism that he hadn't really thought about as much. And he was really had decided that his friends weren't really his friends anymore. Ready for a fresh start, Logan Schindelman enrolled at Washington State University, more than 300 miles from home. His first year at college, I, I think, turned out to be very unpleasant for him. And I don't think he had a whole lot of friends there. And his close friends from high school, he'd all but forgotten. And you know, I'd contacted him a bunch of times after we graduated. I'd message him on Facebook. He would read them, but would never reply. After his freshman year at college and still unsure what he wanted to do with his life, Logan returned to Tumwater to live with his grandmother and half-sister. But friends say he wasn't the same happy-go-lucky Logan. He came into my work and brought an application in, and I was just like, hey, like, good to see you. Like, how are you doing? And he didn't say much. He didn't, he kind of got, like, nervous when I saw him. It was very weird. For the next year, Logan kept busy working odd jobs around town. Then one Thursday morning in May, his grandma was getting ready for work when Logan said something she thought was a bit bizarre. He was really nervous and he said he'd had an epiphany and he was driving around. And I said, well, talk to me tonight when I got back from home. But that talk and Logan's epiphany didn't transpire. And of course, I wish I could have said, sit down, let's talk about it. Yeah. Ginny Jibo would never see him again. The next day, I pinged his phone, and it pinged near his mom's house. So I thought, well, he went over there, was visiting with her, and so that was OK. It wasn't OK. Logan wasn't with his mother in nearby Olympia. In fact, detectives believe he went in the opposite direction. And we have activity on his phone um, going down towards I-5. Um, heading south, and then the phone starts heading back up north, and then it heads south again and stops where we've recovered the vehicle. When the 19-year-old hadn't come home by Monday, his grandma filed a missing persons report. Police ran the plates on his car and discovered it had been impounded. It all starts here with three bizarre 911 calls. A car is drifting across lanes of a busy highway in Olympia, Washington. However, the callers noticed something strange. There's no one in the vehicle. We find out the vehicle's been recovered already. And then we get the, the story of um, some witnesses saying that they saw a subject running out from the vehicle. And for it to be abandoned on, on the interstate and hitting a Jersey barrier, that, that's weird as well. What do you mean abandoned on the interstate? One of the witnesses said the vehicle had veered towards the center lane and hit the, the barrier and stopped. It was a truck driver heading north on I-5 who claims he saw someone jump right out of the moving vehicle. And he sees somebody jump out of the passenger side of the vehicle. The passenger side of the vehicle. Right. And what was the description given of this individual? They initially said a white male, 
um, but, but basically a male, and then ran towards the woods off the interstate. Police searched a two mile radius on those woods by air and on the ground, but never found any sign of what might have been Logan. One possible sighting of a naked teen later that night brings even more intrigue to the case. What about this black guy who was seen without any clothes wandering around? We thought that might have been Logan as well. And so they did initiate the search um, using dogs and didn't locate anything. You weren't able to identify who that was. Could have been Logan, maybe not. Could have been Logan, could have been anybody. Inside the teen's abandoned car, cops found his wallet, ID, and cell phone, plus something that leads to even more unanswered questions. One of the curious things was in the center console of the vehicle were some bags of like grocery bags, which kind of led us to believe that if somebody was on the driver's side going over to the passenger side, those bags would have been knocked down. So in theory we have that there might have been two people and the truck driver only saw one person. And they can't explain other strange occurrences either. What's so bizarre is the check-in at Facebook. It's very bizarre. An unexplainable digital clue in the case came one week after Logan vanished. He did a check-in on his Facebook page at the Olympia Regional Airport. If he's checking in via his own Facebook page and you're saying no one else had the password? Right. That you know of? That we know of. So either someone is trying to throw law enforcement off or in fact this is indeed Logan, right? Correct. And nearly a year after he disappeared, there's been no sign of Logan Schindelman. I have no reason to believe he's been killed. I don't have no reason to believe he's alive. But his family might just have a few reasons. Who benefits from Logan's disappearance? Up next, police question a possible person of interest. He was investigated and submitted to a polygraph. And some wonder, could there be a possible reason he doesn't want to be found? We were told you were trying to keep Logan away from the black side of his family. 